and I didn't realize all the, um, the potential that my son had. Because we have this love for the community, we want them to come and we want them to feel comfortable here and we want to learn together. Kamale has been a traveling preschool. We work with children from zero to three years old, and we go into the communities that need us most. It takes a whole community to, to raise a child. A family, ohana, parents, teachers, kupuna. We want to promote the early childhood and family-based education. Having the kind of resources there where you have a team of knowledgeable staff that is helping you as a parent to succeed and that are helping to love your children and to raise them to be smarter and better individuals, I think can only help your community. It strengthens our community because, because everyone in this program is from this side. In the Hawaiian Islands on the north shore of Oahu lies a stretch of rural communities collectively known as Ko'olau Loa. It is a unique area known for its natural beauty and rich Polynesian heritage. This community is so blessed. We have all the cultures here. We, we live together, we learn to accept one another. I think one of the great things about living here in Ko'olau Loa is the constant reminder of how important families are. We seem to be closer to each other on this side. We're like a big ohana. And children are respected and revered as well as our elders. While it has many strengths, Ko'olau Loa, like all communities, also deals with its share of challenges. Now our children are exposed to so much. This generation is having the is, is born in the most difficult time that you can be born in. Young people are getting involved in, in drugs and alcohol and that, that worries me. I worry for the youth of this area. There's major social issues that are being dealt with as a community. And part of that is, you know, poverty level and not a lot of job opportunities. I mean, there's definitely stress and we see it. But this generation coming up is going to have to be real, have real guidance. If, they, if they're not, they're going to be lost. In the mid-1990s, a group of community leaders led by Auntie Maxine Kaha'ule Leo and Uncle John Kaina recognized the need for a locally driven, culturally based early childhood education program. Wanting to help reinforce families and give youth an early developmental start, they established Na Kamale. Some people were on the brain development path. Some people were on, I want stronger families because look at all the daddies. We don't have the father, uh, male figures in our homes. We have to strengthen them for tomorrow's children. Some people were just seeing, we're losing the things that keep us unique, that keep us Hawaiian, and that keep us connected to one another and the land. And the kupuna were pretty adamant that the children were exposed to what we now call place-based learning. We brainstormed together and sat at the table and gave ideas and things and we came up with our lessons that way. And integrating the aina, integrating our surroundings, integrating our lifestyle here and our values. That's how we started. With a desire to provide relevant learning materials and to generate program funding, Na Kamale collaborated with community members to produce a series of children's books. These books, used in classroom settings and in the home, perpetuate local knowledge, stories, and values. The books also triggered a desire to develop a written curriculum. The task was given to Melody Naluai Vega. The idea that Na Kamale had was to 
document uh, the curriculum. She was faced with a disarray of lessons that had come from the community and the families and things that had arose from the children's questions. And she was able to really think in a Hawaiian fashion about how to pull the thematic together, about how to have it sustainable and repeatable and to use the gifts not only of the families but of the teachers in administrating that curriculum. It's really based on that the family is the most important part of a child's learning. That's where it begins. So it just takes that value of a family child interaction learning program and says, okay, this is how you do it. So in that manner, the Leakule My Curriculum is pioneering because there has never been a curriculum for family and child interaction learning programs. The curriculum itself is written um, pretty clearly step by step, so it's broken down into themes. So there's seven themes in a curriculum, and each theme, it goes by month. It um, starts kind of like on a micro level, so it just starts off as who I am, so they're learning their name, um, their self-identity, and then it'll eventually go on to learning about their community and then their, the natural world around them. And it gives us a specific lessons by weeks and even days, but what we do with it is we look at what would work for our class and kind of add in our own activities or interpret the theme to things that will fit our families that we have currently. Our theme is about families. So we're making little books the kids can make with their parents. And we're gonna make books up with our families, okay? Something we can do together as a family. In the curriculum we have what we call moenaha, uh, ho'olohe, first they listen in class, ho'opili, then they, they connect, and then ho'ohana, and then ho'opuka, they, they take it home and hopefully that knowledge will help them at home. We show kuleana when we clean and help to repair Yosepa. It's some people's kuleana to malama or take care of the canoe and the lo'i and the beach. That's all different people's kind of kuleana. Implementing the curriculum is not just doing activities, but also helping the teacher, the family, the child understand and begin to practice Hawaiian way. So that, that's, that's the key to, to the curriculum, really. So for our young kikis to learn that, the parents have to know that. If the parents don't get it, there's no way we're gonna continue it in the generations to come. This curriculum can and will and has taught young children and families not only how to bond, but how to enrich their experiences so that they grow up with that additional strength in their lives. When they get to kindergarten, they are ready. Although the core competency of this program is Hawaiian values, Hawaiian culture, integrated with Western practices and studies, we have children from all ethnic backgrounds. We run a Tuara school. The targeted group is from Ko'olauloa. We don't turn anyone away. So we have four different sites, one in Punau, one in Haula, one in Laie, one in Kahuku. When they first come in the class, they're welcomed by the teachers, then they get together. That's when everybody sits on the mat and the kumu is in charge and she gets everybody to say the pule. We have a pule. And then we do a homai. It's a Hawaiian value. We, we all care for each other and we all love Akua, you know. So we give thanks to Akua and then we sing Aloha Kakahiaka. And then they learn the different songs. They get to play different instruments and learning the songs helps the children to remember different words. <laughs> She 
It says it is kalo. So they go to the low eaters. And so what she does is she's going to pass the knowledge on to her grandson. In Kana. supper time, our kumu always adds a Hawaiian value to it. And the children understand the value of laulima. They understand the value of malama, ohana, um, aloha. They understand all that because she not only teaches them in Sukkot time, but we go and do an activity that has to do with it. So it's uh, practicing it, yeah. Oh. After the Sukkot time, they have different activities. So we have the Hawaiian station where they get to practice on the Hawaiian aspect. And then they have other sections that are set already for different activities. And watch mommy, watch mommy, and then you and finally, when they've done that, they can play with a Play-Doh or they can have water play, they can have um, outdoor play. Hi guys! Hi! Wow. Morning. On Friday, we all congregate here in the garden. They wait at the front of the garden, then the, they ask permission if they can come in. Then the teachers welcome them in. What we wanted to do was take the um, classroom curriculum and expand it to a um, hands-on curriculum outside in the garden once a week. So we put up some um, bigger-than-life creatures. We've got local artisans to help us create and develop that so that it's more children-friendly and it truly was an attraction and it was a classroom that they wanted to come to. They've put so much time and thought into it and it's so hands-on and it's beautiful and I, I don't know, I love the garden. With hundreds of participants having attended Nakamalei through the years, the real success of the program is reflected in the impact it has had on children and their families. Being a stay-at-home mom, it's so easy to forget about your kids like education-wise, but Nakamalei forces me as a parent to focus for those two and a half hours on my son. So it really gives me that time to set my priorities straight and to be like, okay, this is my time to teach you. I didn't think I would be interested in like a parent participation program, but since she's, she's the baby and I thought, oh, I have the time, I'm able to go and I love it. It, it gives me a three days a week, a two hour period where it's just me and Maya and um, we can learn together and just be together, just play with her. I'm not distracted by the other kids. I'm not distracted by household duties. And if that's an uppercase, what is this? A lowercase. Yay! So she learned a lot of skills, learned a lot of words. Uh, she always talks about La Lima. Uh, she will not let us eat without saying pule. What color is that? I really like um, just the fact that he can socialize. And I think it's really helping prepare him for school. <laughs> Our three children have been able to pound poi and um, pound sweet potato. And they've been learning so much about their culture. Every single lesson we have is tied to, you know, either taking care of yourself, your family, or this is how we take care of the land, this is how we take care of the water, this is what we need to do, this is how we need to protect it. And all of those things tied together means that my children are learning how to take care of it for themselves and for their future generations. And what that also encompasses is family, um, learning activities, where I can be strengthened and I can be a better parent so that when I go home, I have better tools, I have better knowledge as a parent that I can give to my own children when they're at home. The fox. The fox and the gingerbread man. For Maya, I feel like she's learning more about the land and the, the people in this, in this community. She's learning it in English and in Hawaiian, and I feel like that just opens up parts of her brain to be able to take in more information and um, 
and I feel like she's learning how to go to school. There's a routine and it's the same every week. Some families came and they were kind of shy at the beginning. The children weren't, you know, ready to play or to interact with other children. They have come a long way and they feel more part of the community. They're stronger, it seems to me. They're ready to learn more and go to school. They're ready for school. Nakamale's longevity is due in part to its commitment to growth and evolution. The organization continually strives for improvement. For a long time, we were the best kept secret. Everybody heard of Nakamale, they just never knew what it was. Hence, the new signage that went up in the area, the different color building. It forced people to stop and ask, who are you? What do you do? We have expanded to such a point where we have younger teachers with younger ideas, you know. It's exciting. And on Fridays when everybody comes and they go I've seen a definite change um, in different stations that they have and different worksheets, different activities, more Hawaiiana stuff that, that they include in the lessons every week. It's all of the same things that drew me to it for the first time, but it's a stronger, more organized program. They work really, really hard to make every class, every lesson successful and go smoothly. It's their resourcefulness and the fact that the leadership gives them enough space to be creative. So they use their energies in ways that are their strengths. Fostering the growth of Nakamale has been an ongoing partnership with researchers from the University of Hawaii. Since 2009, the researchers have been utilizing the Strengths Enhancing Evaluation Research, or SEER model, in its work with Nakamale. The effort has brought additional resources and perspective to Nakamale as it strives for ongoing sustainability. It's nice to have something out here where you're meeting people who are your neighbors and working with them and helping your children to learn to work together, you know, as a, like a real community. Peter Matira, who's my uh, research partner, our doctoral students from the school, worked as a team with them and we really felt like we were part of their ohana. So in that process, we've come to understand more deeply what they do not only from their participants, but from their staff. We've conducted focus groups with them and learned a lot about who they are and why they're so committed to this program. They understand the, the demographics, they understand the various cultures, the entities, and how it all comes together. So they're objective, but they're sensitive to everything. But the first part was really establishing a relationship with them so that there was mutual respect. And I think that's the foundation of the work we're doing with them, is that we're learning from them. It's very reciprocal. Did you get to understand more of what the program's objectives are? If we went through with the teachers more often, that, that handout that they give yeah. us, that folder, it would keep us more on track, because they don't really check up on us with that. I think maybe that Part would be Part of what a we were doing there was formative, Formative evaluation means that you give them feedback as you go. You let them know, for example, from the focus groups, some of the things that have been brought up by families that they could improve, and they, they jump on it, they utilize it, and they make those changes. It is what it is. If we have our weaknesses, we need to work on them and make them strengths. We have our strengths, we need to recognize those and make sure we don't lose that. From humble grassroots beginnings, Nakamale has become an exceptional model of early childhood education. Grounded in culture, community, and family-based learning, the program has changed the lives of countless individuals, giving much hope for the future well-being of Ko'olau Loa. Nakamale has a very bright future considering that early childhood education is known to impact uh, life outcomes and contributions to communities and the socioeconomic well-being of communities, states, etc. So 
Yes, indeed. This kind of investment in our children is critical. To help these mothers now when their children are young, I think it's just wonderful. Gets them off to a better start. Helps them to be able to care better for their children. The children learn more. Like at this age, they're learning their colors, they're learning their numbers, and they're not only learning it in English, they're learning it in Hawaiian. The values that we've learned from our parents and our grandparents need to be passed on to the, the, the younger generation. Uh, and there's no other way but having them together and teaching them. Going back to that is critical to restoring our well-being. Our well-being for generations to come is really based on our connections to those roots. You can see the love for it, each other in those children. They care for each other. They care for their, even they come to us and they embrace us and that's, that's the icing on the cake, you know. You can see that they really love us and we love them. It's a reciprocal exchange of learning, of love and caring for each other.